Hi Michael. Hello. Hi. Uh, you. Today we are on a conference practitioners for practitioners EMC for business and you are with us. So you are a practitioner of EMC field. Tell me what's your experience and what you are doing in your job. Yes, I started uh, with this field uh, in a very early age, uh, soon after the, the university degree, because I liked uh, these uh, new approaches that was something uh, quite, as I'd say, a little unexplored, and uh, I liked uh, to give my contribution to this uh, kind of uh, field. So I started, of course, as an engineer from a technical point of view, and during the time I was following more and more the products just to apply for this field. That was a very stimulating activity. I still like to, to cooperate with people, to help them somehow in solving their issues that nowadays are becoming always more and more because of increasing the frequency for testing. Uh, all the equipments are going higher and higher and uh, that's becoming more challenging. Okay, thank you. And I think the heart uh, of every EMC laboratory is EMI receiver, so yeah. equipment you are producing. Why now we can do measurements faster than previous? Yeah, in reality the FFT uh, concept is not a new one, it was already applied in some spectrum analyzers in the past, but uh, the real um, difference is that now we have to cope also with the, the CISPR 16-1-1 standard that is defining very clearly and specifically all the parameters that you have to uh, get from the receiver, even if it's FFT, to provide a proper measurement according, of course, to the old standards. Uh, that was challenging at the beginning until we didn't have uh, uh, some components able to process the signals much faster. Then it was happening and uh, we made a, um, a choice because in this case you can theoretically put a lot of the, these circuits in parallel to have always faster and faster uh, receiving. Uh, but uh, of course it's a matter of cost. So if you multiply these circuits, the cost will be too high. And then we decided to stay in a compromise uh, with the solution that is giving a, a complete test, for example, in the conducted range in uh, no more than 25 seconds, using uh, always the whole time, one second, that is the typical one for quasi-peak detector, and all the other features are very strictly fulfilled. At the point that we can, of course, offer the, the accredited calibration for our FFT receivers. This was a requirement coming from the automotive uh, market at the beginning because they needed to check about uh, uh, some signals that are occurring only in a random way, so they are not always there, and that's why this was having um, some benefits. After that, of course, we could apply this concept to other equipment that cannot be switched on for a long time, like, for example, some uh, uh, mixer for the food or uh, some ironing machines or other, other kind of uh, equipment that uh, we want to test with a short time that uh, is not possible to keep on for longer. So, yeah, now we can do measurements much faster because we can uh, test in time domain and then make uh, FFT. Uh, let me know if I correct understand your company philosophy about EMI receivers. So you are not producing the fastest, but it's the best solution optimum between price and time spent for testing. Yes, you are fully correct. As I was saying, we, we are always looking to the application. When we think to this equipment, we don't want to make something that is the best unit in the world. We must be more practical, so that's meaning we have to cope with the people that even not in the big labs, even in the R&D department, uh, they want to uh, have a proper tool to test uh, faster, but still keeping the compliance. That's why we selected this compromise. And I think it's a good compromise because uh, uh, you have to compare 25 seconds versus uh, the more than two hours uh, of uh, testing with the quasi-peak with the standard uh, receiver. So it's already a very good benefit. 25 seconds is nothing for me. So that's meaning even if you can test in one second, what's the, the benefit if you have to pay maybe four or five times more? 
So that's why we selected this compromise. Uh, thank you. And tell me one more thing, because we've got EMI receiver and spectrum analyzer. Yeah. And you've got a reasonable price for EMI receiver, but still it's more than a spectrum analyzer. Tell me, what's the difference between the spectrum analyzer and EMI receiver? Uh, there are so many, but uh, I would say the most important are uh, that with the spectrum analyzer, normally you get the full uh, frequency span in one shot. That's meaning you get the, all the energy coming from uh, the equipment you are testing, especially when it's wideband uh, noise. Uh, this energy can saturate the input. And uh, most of the time, the spectrum analyzer, they don't have uh, the preselector filters. And all these topics are affecting the sensitivity of the receiver because they need to increase the attenuators. And even they get on saturation very easily and uh, they don't give you the chance for measuring uh, the signals uh, properly. Because you can uh, have all the uh, values in the spectrum going over the limit. And then you can only decide, okay, this is a mess. I mean, uh, my EUT is not good at all. But it's not true. It's only because you are not using the proper tool for making, taking the measurement. On the other side, the receivers, they are tuning one frequency at a time. So they can even change the attenuator level uh, one by one, one frequency at a time. And that's the best you can make for detecting a signal with the proper sensitivity and preventing also saturation when needed. That's the, the biggest, uh, let's say, difference uh, between them. There are also some other issues, but uh, I think this one uh, will be the, the definitely the best. Even uh, selecting a pre-compliant receiver just because of this, because of tuning, uh, would be much better than selecting a spectrum analyzer. Also when um, they claim they have uh, the EMC feature that no, most of the time is meaning only having a quasi-peak detector uh, available on the unit, but without pre-selection this is making uh, definitely unuseful uh, to, to make some the measurement in, especially in, with wideband noise. So even for pre-compliance tests, you should buy EMI receiver instead of spectrum analyzer, yeah. yes? Yeah, yeah, exactly what I mean, yes. Because uh, we showed exactly during the, this workshop, uh, make, taking some measurement together with the people attending this uh, event, uh, one by one, all the measurement uh, when using uh, the pulses that are specified by the SIP standard. The, so we make very critical tests. Uh, starting from 100 Hz uh, pulse repetition frequency and going down. And as soon as the, the frequency is becoming uh, uh, lower, you can see the difference is becoming much higher uh, in detection of the signal. So that's making a big difference. Yeah. So the receiver, even pre-compliant, is still a better choice than uh, the spectrum analyzer. And in the end, please tell me what do you think about the first day of our conference here in Wrocław? I have to say I've been uh, positively surprised because it's a long time I miss uh, uh, Poland and uh, really uh, I have to make my compliments and my congratulations to the organization because everything was uh, very well organized, managed uh, so far. Tomorrow we have another day, but I think uh, it will be not different. Uh, and uh, especially, I say, uh, being a speaker and uh, also a presenter for the workshop, I was having the right timing uh, to explain uh, everything uh, that I was thinking was uh, uh, useful, beneficial for the audience. And that's very important because most of the time you find some organization, they are trying to shrink a lot of people all together and the people can get very confused, they don't know where to go and uh, something uh, completely different. So thanks a lot for this organization. I hope to attend some other meetings with you. That's, that will be very uh, pleasant for me. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, my team, uh, for the organization. And see you next time. Definitely, you. yes. Definitely, yes. Thanks so much.